Today's bonus episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by Stat Hero. Stat Hero is reshaping the way you play fantasy sports. Sign up today at stathero.com slash lockdown. We're talking about Kyir Elam now, Florida Gators cornerback superstar, if you ask me. I think he's a phenomenal football player. And when you look at him as a player, the strengths, the weaknesses, we'll talk about team fits and round projection later. But you look at him as a player, and the biggest thing I think that pops out is his aggressiveness, his physicality at the line of scrimmage specifically. He is very good at timing his punch with receivers, and that's something that I played corner. I was terrible at it, but it's a very difficult thing to do, and a lot of college guys you see, they press with two arms, and they throw themselves completely off balance. They throw themselves completely out of the play, and it gives up bigger plays. Kyrie Elam does not really have that issue. He is very good at just getting one hand on a receiver and disrupting their route timing. And that is big because so much of football nowadays nowadays is about timing. And if you can really mess that up with a, between a quarterback and a receiver, you can completely throw off their offense. So you look at the aggressiveness at the line of scrimmage is easily the biggest feature of Kyrie Elam's game. He's a very tall corner. He's six foot one and a half, six foot two. He's got great length, great size. And for someone at his size, I think you really got to talk about the fluidity. I think his hips are so fluid and switching and man coverage. He's very talented there. And you talk about everybody that talks about a scheme fit, a team fit. People always say, press man or press zone. That's what everybody talks about him. And it's never, it's never both. He is a press corner. That's what he does. Just let him get physical at the line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter whether you're asking to play man or zone coverage. He's got experience playing both Florida messed around with a lot of cover one and a lot of cover three last year. So Kyrie Elam is very experienced. He's also played cover two and cover four, but primarily cover one and cover three. So his press coverage is phenomenal. He can play man. He can play zone. He's a very versatile player and his ball skills are phenomenal he knows how to make a play on the ball whether it's getting his arms in there to break up a pass or whether he's jumping a route for an interception we didn't really see him take the ball away so much but he was always around the ball and we saw him make a diving interception he's made a lot of plays on the ball he knows how to disrupt a passing attack completely I think when you look at the downside of Kyir Elam easily the thing you talk about is penalties He is one of the most penalized corners in college football, but that's something that you just take with someone who is as talented as he is. You know, uh, Sauce Gardner had a lot of penalties as well. That's just something, and Kobe Bryant, both with Cincinnati. That's just something that you take with a corner. And I think with Kyrie Elam, it's something where we're going to see him clean it up. You know, last year he had that penalty against Alabama. That was, that was a phantom pass interference, but he is a grabby corner, especially if he does lose his footing a little bit, he tends to panic grab and and kind of take himself out of the play there and give the offense just free yardage but penalties I think will get cleaned up you know I think last season was kind of an anomaly he was playing hurt a lot of the time so he had to kind of panic at certain points but I think penalties are a big negative for him but that's something that you also trade away with with someone who's as aggressive as he is when you're as aggressive at the line of scrimmage and at the point of attack as Kyrie Elam is penalties are going to happen but I think as an NFL team you kind of measure do you, do you care that much against the pass interference when you want a corner who's as physical as he is, like a, like a Richard Sherman type in terms of physicality? And then you also look at tackling is a big question mark for Kyrie Elam. That's something that a lot of people tend to bring up with him, and they tend to bring up with a lot of corners. But with Kyrie Elam specifically, he's physical at the line of scrimmage. He's got great size. You would think he'd be a little bit more physical in the run game, but again, he was dealing with injuries this past season, but that's not an excuse for the tackling. That's been something that's been a uh, a bit of a downside for his game is that he is not a very physical run defender. And a lot of players or a lot of coaches and myself included as a as an evaluator, I will say I don't care that much about a corner not being able to tackle. It's extra credit. If you can do it, fantastic. If you can't, you're a corner. That's not really your job primarily. Just don't give up a massive run right at you. I think that's what you care about more. And dealing with injuries, durability is going to be a question mark for him right now. I I don't think it's necessarily a big thing that you have to worry about, but it's something to monitor where he was dealing with injuries this past season. And and you could see even when he did play, he was hampered a little bit, but he's someone who played through. And I mean, his level of play did not drop much. Like, Like he was someone who was still one of the top corners in college football. And he's not the big name like Derek Stingley Jr. He's not the big name like Ahmad Gardner. But he's someone who 
has been consistently productive and consistently reliable in coverage. So I think you're getting, yes, a long physical corner and you just, de- you. I think you have to trade off, go, you know, if we want a physical corner, penalties are going to happen. That's something that happens a lot. You get a press corner who is capable of completely disrupting an offense. And Kyrie Lim is someone that I very openly said, I think he's going to be a first round pick, but we'll talk more about that in just a second because it's spring break. You're trying to get fit. You're trying to get healthy. You're trying to look good. It's it's beach bod season, baby. And that's when you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is so sweet. Coated in 100% chocolate, just 130 calories, just four net carbs, along with 17 grams of protein. Throw out the hidden stashes, Reese's in the desk drawer, Kit Kat in the cupboard, wherever you got, whatever you got. No matter. Just get rid of them. Get Built Bar. You don't got to feel guilty. You don't got to sneak around and you get to look great. Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time flavors so you'll never get bored. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your next order. That is LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to get 15% off of your next order with Built or BuiltBar.com. Now we're talking about team fits and round projection for Kyrie Lim. I said it right before the break. I think he's a first round pick. I think he goes mid first to early second. I think the earliest we look at him go is the Patriots or the Eagles. I I, I think those are the most likely team fits for him um, in terms of if he's going in the mid, mid late first. Uh, But I don't think he makes it past 30. He could go early second, but if it's me, he doesn't make past 30 to the Kansas City Chiefs if they t- if they keep their picks. I think when you look at the Chiefs' defense, he is a perfect fit. They just lost Traverius Ward. They got to bring in a new talent. They lost Tyran Matthew. Their secondary is bleeding right now. Daniel Sorensen is gone. Their secondary needs help, and they need cheap help because they are going to be up against the cap for the next decade. So you add Kyrie Lam, a corner that can step in immediately and be the starting corner for the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the starting corners for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's right in their wheelhouse at 29 and 30. I don't think, if they keep both their picks, I don't think he makes it past them. I think it's just too good of a fit. But then you look at 25 and you've got the Buffalo Bills. It's a team that a lot of people have been mocking him to. And they like to go man. They like to go zone. They like to switch things up depending on their personnel. That is one thing that the Bills do really well. And I think if you have Tredavious White on one side and you have Kyrie Lam on the other side, what you're going to do is mix up man and zone, but you're going to play press and you are going to give opposing quarterbacks and opposing wide receivers fits for the entire season. I think he steps in right away and plays. And I think he contributes very early. They've also gone with some uh, roster turnover in the secondary. They're getting backed up against the cap. They've got Josh Allen's contract. They've got Stephon Diggs' new contract. They've got big time players that they're going to have to keep re-signing. So Kyrie Elam, another cheap, immediate starter. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are another team that just fits. I spoke about this the other day with David Harrison of Locked On Bucks. He fits perfectly with what Todd Bowles wants and he's also someone who can step in and maybe he doesn't start immediately but he's someone that is a starter in waiting you know that you've got Sean Murphy Bunting and Jamel Dean are both on expiring contracts now so you bring in Kyrie Elam and you get to save some money from not having to pay either Jamel Dean or Sean Murphy Bunting or you can just let them both walk and Kyrie Elam can step in immediately as a starter opposite Carlton Davis if you want him to, if you don't, then you sit him on the bench and you let the other guys walk. But I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a great team. When you look at team need and fit, that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We've also got the New England Patriots are a team that I mentioned before and the Philadelphia Eagles. Both of those teams, I, I like them for the same reason. They like running man coverage and they like running press coverage. They do. And I know that Kyrie Elam is not just a press man corner. But he, he is better in man than he is in zone. So if you have a team like the New England Patriots or like the Philadelphia Eagles, you add Kyrie Elam, you've got your immediate starter for the next four or five years before you have to re-sign him. You're going to keep him. He's cheap. He's effective. He's going to be efficient. And with the Philadelphia Eagles specifically, I really like it because he's your corner too. He's going to be opposite Darius Slay. And I think allowing him the time to learn behind Darius Slay, who's been one of the better press man corners in the NFL for years, but was with the Detroit Lions, so did not get his respect. I think you have him opposite, and that is just a fantastic match right there of just corners that are going to make receivers throw fits. And with the New England Patriots, they love running press man, and their corners, for some reason, always work out. 
So adding a guy with an already high floor and a very high ceiling to your defense, I'm not saying he's going to be Stephon Gilmore. I wouldn't say that, but he could replace that Stephon Gilmore role. They let their corners walk. They let their they let corners walk. They let corners go because they know that in their defense, they're going to get the most out of their corners. Kyrie Elam could be that next guy for four or five years before he wants big bucks that you keep him on the roster and you help get yourself closer to that playoff picture that you've been working towards since you lost Tom Brady and hopefully not getting blown out in this one. And I also think when you look at who you can compare Kyrie Elam to, I think in play style, in terms of play style, you look at someone like a Greedy Williams. I, I, I think Greedy Williams is a solid comparison. I think you can also look at Jalen Johnson and say he's a solid comparison. It just depends if you're the type to go, he's press man or he's press zone. Because I think Jalen Johnson's the better fit. I think he's a more versatile player. Greedy Williams, press man, great. Length, great. Not a great run defender, perfect fit. But I think Jalen Johnson is the better fit. You've got press physicality. You've got man. You've got the zone. You've got someone who can step in and play immediately and contribute immediately. And that is what you're getting with Kyir Elam. So I think Jalen Johnson is a sound fit for Kyir. And I think that we see him get his name called on Thursday this year, day one in the first round.